Hey, what is going on guys? Slick Joe here, hoping you guys are having a fantastic day. And today I have a video for you guys where we are going to be going over the main Easter egg in Revelations. Yeah, I'm going to have a full guide for you guys, super detailed, super easy to follow. So let's not waste any more time, let's get right into the video. So the first step in the main Easter egg is you have to shoot the gravestones at spawn. So right when you spawn, if you look to the left, in that jump pad area and the area to the left of that, there's going to be two gravestones in the background a little bit. There's going to be two on each uh, little area. So the order you need to shoot them is, is start on the left side and shoot the inside gravestone and then go to the right where the jump pad is and shoot the inside gravestone there and then back to the other side, shoot the outside gravestone all the way to the left and then back to the other side and the outside gravestone all the way to the right. After you shoot all those gravestones, you should hear a like a lightning bolt or some kind of like thunder audio cue and you should see some like red fire come out the front of the gravestone. So once you've done this and you've either seen the fire or heard the audio cue, you can move on to the next step which is the keeper ritual. So what you need to do for this step is you obviously need the keeper protector altar built and if you don't know how to do that, I do have a video on my channel, you can check it out. I'll put a link down in the description below. But once you have that, you need to go find a little stone at the back of one of the jump pads around the map. It's going to look like this, it's going to be kind of hard to see but just look for it, it'll be right in the middle in the back of it behind the like blue orb itself for the jump pad. And once you find that, that is the area you need to take the keeper to start the ritual at. So you need to bring the keeper over there and you might have to jump back and forth a couple of times and eventually he's going to start doing this ritual with moving his hands and saying a bunch of bullshit. I'm not really sure what he does, but he does a little ritual and it lasts a good amount of time. It's two or three rounds, I would say. And a thing to note is if you do accidentally take the jump pad during the ritual or you let the keeper die because the zombies will attack the keeper and not you at this time your game has a very very good chance of crashing so you got to make sure you don't let either of those things happen which brings me to my next point a margua is going to spawn at round 10 or 12 somewhere in between there and he's also going to attack the keeper and if you're not prepared for that he can kill him really easily and then your game might crash mine did every time that i let that happen so you guys just got to be aware of that so if you don't feel comfortable taking the margua out i suggest maybe you wait till that round kill the margua and then let the keeper start doing his ritual so after he does his ritual and you complete that he'll disappear and he's going to drop a audio reel at down but where he was standing you need to take that audio reel over to knock and put it on the the audio player that's on the second floor in the same room as the panel that you shocked the apothecary with to open up the pack punch room. And it's going to be an audio reel with Sophia and uh, Dr. Maxis saying some stuff. If you want to hear any of the audio reels, I will have all of the audio for those on my channel. You can check it out. But anyway, after you've done the first one, you can move on to the second audio reel. So this one, you're going to need little Arnie's. And if you're on solo, you're also going to want a way to get a max ammo. So either have the cashback gobble gum or save your challenge that gives you the max ammo for this point so once you get the little arnies out of the box you need to head over to the apothecon where the pack of punch is and what you're going to need to do with these little arnies is you're going to need to throw them in these holes that are scattered around the outside uh, corners of the apothecon there's nine of them and you need to throw them in sets of three in a certain amount of time so you need to throw one in in a hole in sets of three and you have a limited amount of time to do this so throw one in you'll hear a audio cue which sounds like this not a good time, freak bag. And then move on to another one, throw that one in. If you hear the audio cue, move on to another one, throw that one in. And if you did it, three of them successfully in the right amount of time, three Margos will spawn in the Apothecon. Now all you have to do is kill those and then you can get a max ammo. If the Margo doesn't drop one, like I said, use the Gobble Gum or the Challenge and then you can do it over again. You have to throw three more little Arnies into three different holes that you didn't use before and the same thing will happen. Now if you run out of time and you throw one in and the time already expired, you'll hear the Samantha laugh, or if you throw one in a hole you already used, you'll hear the Samantha laugh, so just be aware of that. Also, the easiest way to do this is to go prone and get close to the hole and throw them in. Uh, it seems like that's the easiest way and you can't really miss it if you do that, so go ahead and do that as an easy way to complete this. So after you've done that three times successfully, there will be a audio reel on the lower bridge in the middle of the Apothecon. Pick that up. And that one you're going to want to take to Kino. There's going to be a audio player on the stage, uh, the right side of the stage. So place that down in another radio with Sophia and Maxis will play. And then you can move on to the third and final audio reel. So for this one, you're going to need to shoot these little rocks around the map. And you need to shoot them with a pack of punched gun. So you're going to need like the Dingo, the Draken, some kind of LMG or assault rifle, something ranged. That you can shoot them with and they're going to be super hard to see and they're normally going to be in spots outside of the map so the first one and the easiest one is you go over to shang and you'll see this little rock here above stamina up shoot that and you'll see a bone is going to kind of float up from it you need to shoot that bone 
with the upgraded Apothecan Servant. And if you don't know how to upgrade it, I have a video on my channel for that as well. I'll put a link in the description. But so shoot it with that and it will suck up this bone. You'll know if it sucked it up because you will hear a sound that sounds like this. So once you've heard that sound and you know you sucked the bone up, you can go ahead and move on to the next one. So the next one we're gonna go to is the one in the spawn. Now this is one of the hardest ones to see. It's in the church here. You have to look in between these rocks and you'll see this kind of one rock in the back that kind of sticks out. It's really small and if you shoot it like I do here, you'll see the bone fly up and then all you need to do is shoot the Apothecan Servant in there again, wait till you hear that audio quote or that audio cue that lets you know you've sucked it up and you can move on to the next one. So the next one we're going to go to is the one in Verrucht. So head over to Verrucht. Right outside the teleporter, you're going to take a right and you're going to see it over it back by the waterfall back here. So go ahead and shoot that one, do the same thing, suck it up, listen for the audio noise and move on to the next one. So the next one we're going to go to is in, is in the Origins area. So go up to the Origins area by the Keeper Protector altar up there and look down outside of the map and this one's going to be really hard to see as well it's down towards the bottom but you can see here if you sh i shoot it down there and then you'll see another bone pop up just go ahead and shoot the pot and serve down there again and move on to the next one which is in knock so once you're in knock you're going to want to go up to the second floor and look over on this ledge here and it's kind of hard to see but once you know where it's at this is another easier one to kind of get a hold on where it's at so go ahead and shoot that with your gun and then suck it up with the Apothecan Servant and we will move on to the final one. So the final one is in DE. It is on the wall run. So what you need to do is you need to wall run here and then right in this corner of this wall you're just going to want to shoot your gun just spray wrong down there and then this will be the spine part. It's the larger bone you'll see. You can see it if you're standing over by the turret too. So just kind of look up after you fall down from shooting it and see if it's up there and if it is Run back over there again, go ahead and shoot it with the Apothecan Servant, wait for the noise that lets you know you have sucked it up, and you found the final bone. So after you have found all the bones, you want to head back to Noct and go up to the second floor. And if you found an, all of them and sucked all of them up, you should see a pile of bones sitting in the middle of the floor there, close to where you put the first audio reel. What you're going to want to do is you need to shoot the Apothecan Servant at those, and that is going to suck up those bones. So once you have sucked up those bones, now you're going to see that body of Sophia, she's like a zombie and she's dead, is going to replace those bones. You need to do the same thing, you're going to have to shoot her with the Apothecan Servant, and that is also going to suck her up. So once you do that, now the audio reel is finally going to take her place. So you go ahead and go over there and pick it up. So go ahead and take this audio reel over to the top in Origins by the excavation site here and place that down on the last audio player. Uh, another audio radio will play and after this radio is done, you're now going to hear Sophia, like you heard her from Grad Krovi, start to talk to you and talk about trying to teleport there but it has failed and she needs assistance. And if you go back to Noct, you're going to notice that she is at the top that broken part on the second floor she's going to be there but she's not going to be like fully teleported into the map it's just going to be kind of a ghost version of her so what you need to do to fully get her into the map is you need to go around to all of those turrets that are in each area of the map there's four of them and you need to shoot the big blue crystals in the sky with that turret so just hold the laser beam on those crystals and after a while of holding it there it's going to kind of lock on and stay there so once you do that in each area lock all the lasers onto her you can head back into Noct and up to where she was at, and if you go up and up to her, she's then going to fully teleport into the map. Uh, you might have to hold extra square on her, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I think she might just teleport in, but just do that just in case if she doesn't. But yeah, so then after she fully teleports in, she is going to tell you that she needs your help, and you need to follow her as she travels over to Kino. Uh, once she is in Kino, what she's going to do is she's going to hop on the top of the teleporter there and power it up, and she wants you to go inside. So head into the teleporter and hold extra square to teleport. Now she is going to teleport you into Samantha's room in the house. And what you need to do is you need to go over to the bed in Samantha's room and you need to pick up the book that is on the bed. That is the Cronorium. So once you pick that up, then you can just kind of look around, wait around, and you'll eventually be teleported back to Kino. Once you're back at Kino, you need to take the book and put it on the podium in the middle of the theater stage there. Uh, once you put it on there, you're going to see some like blue lights go up to the film room. And if you go look in there, there's a new like circle kind of a popkin symbol looking thing on the ground there. So after you've done this, this is going to spawn some eggs on the map. And you need to go around the map and you find these apothecan eggs. Now they're going to spawn in every area. There's about 15 or so spawns of them. So you just need to look really hard. Uh, when you get close to an egg, you are going to hear some sort of like 
gross egg sounding noise. Uh, I'll play it here for you guys so you can hear it. But once you hear that or you see an egg, they're like orange and you'll know when you see them. They're kind of small, but you'll definitely know when you see it. You need to go over there, press X or square and pick it up. So once you pick up the egg, you need to take it over to the apothecan. So take the egg over to the apothecan and you need to put it in one of those four like altars with the teeth coming up that in the like stomach green goo area of the apothecan. So put one in there and the egg will go up and it'll float down and inside the kind of like chamber that is there and it'll start to glow a little bit. Now you just need to charge up the egg with zombie souls and you only need about 10 to 15 of them. Uh, bugs keepers all that stuff works too so once you get it all charged up you will notice that now the egg has been replaced and there's a gate worm sitting there so you need to hold extra square pick up the gate worm and this is how you're going to get the runes of creation so what you're going to need to do is take the gate worm around the map in all four of the areas and there's going to be a rune in each area so just walk around the area and you'll start to hear this kind of sonar beep and your controller might start to vibrate and it's going to get faster and faster as soon as you get closer and closer to the rune. And once it's going as fast as it can go and it's super, super fast, start holding down extra square and eventually the gate worm is going to float over and it's going to be replaced by a rune of creation. And then all you need to do is hold extra square to pick up this rune. I will show you a clip here with the sound so you know exactly what happens and what you need to look for when you are trying to find these runes. So after you've done this, you need to find, do this three more times. You need to find three more eggs, charge them up, and take the gate worms over around the map and find three more runes of creation. After you have collected all four of the runes, you are going to be traveling to the first part of the boss fight. So make sure you're ready, have ammo and all that, and you're ready to go. So what you need to do is head over to Kino and into the film room where that blue kind of portally circle is on the ground. You want to stand on that and hold extra square and this is going to teleport you to the boss fight arena. Now once you're in this arena you're going to want to go towards the front of the boss fight room where you see the stone apothecary gun and the cranorium is going to be there. And you're going to want to hold extra square on that and the book is going to scream and do some crazy stuff and then it's going to open. And it's going to start flipping back and forth through the pages showing you these runes in a specific order in which you need to remember. So make sure you remember this. So if you're on solo, when it shows you a different rune, pause, take a picture of it, write it down, whatever you have to do, and then let it go to the next one. If you're on co-op, then just let your buddies kill all of the zombies and keepers and everything that are spawning while you, one of you looks at the book and writes down the order of the runes. So after it flips through four pages with four different runes in the specific order, you need to go back to where you originally spawned in, back at the top ledge over there and the runes are gonna be cycling through and showing up and you need to hit X on them in the order that you saw them in the book. So if you see the first one pop up, that's the one the book showed you first, you need to hold X or square on that and that'll kind of freeze it up there. Now you do have a limited amount of time to do this and if you get one wrong, you will be teleported out and fail. So make sure you guys are kind of moving semi quick and you don't miss any of these runes by clicking on the wrong one. So you need to click on them in the order the book showed it to you and it'll kind of freeze all of them up there in front of you. Once all four are up, it's gonna start a series of rituals. Now each ritual is gonna have a different kind of elemental phase to it. One's gonna be fire, there's gonna be an electric one, there is going to be a kind of dark one, and then one with these kind of crazy walls like it was in the crazy place. So you need to go through these rituals and there's gonna be margwas that are spawning. So all you have to do is kill, I think it's like two or three margwas in each ritual to end it and move on to the next one. Uh, this is where the thunder gun is super helpful and can help a lot so if you, one of you has that it's going to make your life a lot easier but go ahead and kill these margwas and survive through each one of these rituals and once you do then it will go back to normal and the summoning key that was originally in the top middle of the room is now going to float down to the floor and you're going to be able to pick it up so head over to that in the middle of the room pick that up and you're going to be teleported back to kino so now what you need to do is you need to take the summoning key and you need to throw it at a special item in each area of the map so there's going to be one in kino one in de one in Shangri-La, one in Verrucht, one in Noct, and one in Origins, and also one in uh, Mob of the Dead. So it doesn't matter what order you do these in, you can do them in any order you want, but you might as well do the Kino one first, so you need to throw it up at the Lantern, I think it's that radio that's in the big chandelier in the middle of the map, just throw it up there, and if you hit it, you'll know you have because it'll make kind of like a ding sound. And the item which pertains to that map is going to kind of float up and fly away. And the summoning key will come right back to you. And then you can move on to the next one. 
Now if you do throw the summoning key out of the map and you're worried you're going to lose it, you won't. It'll come right back and it's kind of signaled with like a blue light that goes up in the air. Sort of like the mystery box but a little different. So after that one you can head over to DE and it's the clock that's in DE by the turret outside. Throw it at that and you'll do this. You'll get the same kind of uh, sound there. Then you can head over to Shang and you have to throw it at that blue orb uh, by to the right of the stairway. If you're heading out, you hit that, then the same thing is going to happen. Next, you need to head over to Verrucht and you're going to throw it at the fountain there. And that is going to trigger the same kind of thing. You're going to hear a ding sound. It's going to float up in the air and fly away. And then you can head over to Origins. So once you get out of the portal to Origins, you're going to be in Mob of the Dead, actually. And you want to throw it at the poster towards the back of the jail cell. You'll see it here. Just throw it in there. It's kind of a trickier one, but it's not too bad. And then you can head on to right at the top of Origins at the excavation site. You need to throw it at the tombstone. Uh, jump up here. This is one that's kind of easy to get trapped, so make sure the zombie's away from you or you have someone to protect you. Uh, jump up there, throw it at that, and the same thing will happen. And then the last one you can hit is in Knocked. You need to hit the red barrel on the outside of the map. Just throw it out there. So if that was the last one and you have hit them all successfully, then the summoning key is now going to be gone. It will not come back to you this time. It's just going to be gone. And that means you've hit them all and you can now move on to the final boss fight. So if you're ready to go to the final boss fight, head back to Kino to the teleporter. Get everyone inside. If you're on solos, get inside. Hold X or square and you're going to be teleported back to the boss fight arena from before. This time the shadow man is going to appear and you're going to have to kill him. Now right away, a Margwa and a Panzer is going to spawn, so you might want to take that Panzer out real quick because those can be really annoying during this. But what you need to do is you need to go over to one of those fountains, there's four of them in each corner of the boss fight arena, and place down the summoning key there. And then what you need to do is you need to charge it up with souls. Now you can kill zombies or whatever you want in any area of the map, it doesn't have to be close to it, but you need to kill a bunch of them, I think it's like... 20 or 25 and charge up the summoning key. Once the summoning key is charged, head over to it, hold extra square to pick it up and you need to throw it at Sophia. She's hanging kind of in the middle of the room and it's not her fully there, it's like a ghost of her. So you need to throw it in there and that's gonna cause her to charge up and shock the shadow man, taking down his shield. So once his shield is down, you need to shoot him like you did in Shadows of Evil. So if you're on solo, you might wanna throw down a little Arnie or two, if not, Two of you shoot him, maybe two of you try to protect, whatever strategy you want to do. But you need to shoot the shadow man, he's going to kind of teleport as you shoot him, and you need to keep shooting him until eventually he is in the mouth of the big uh, stone apothecan. Once he's in the mouth of the big stone apothecan, someone needs to hold extra square on the cranorium, that's the book right there in the front, and that is going to zap him with a laser. And there you go, you beat the boss fight, and you've completed the main Easter egg for Revelations. If you've completed all the other easter eggs from the other maps, you're going to get a million XP. If you haven't, you're going to get 200,000, I think. And you'll get the achievements and all that, and then the ending cutscene will get into play. But yeah, guys, it's not a really hard easter egg. It's pretty easy once you know what to do. The beginning steps are kind of confusing and don't really make a whole lot of sense. But uh, yeah, it's not that bad. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead and drop a like down below if you found this video helpful. If you have any more questions on any other details of the easter egg, go ahead and put them down in the comments down below. I will be sure to get to them. And thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you're new. It really does help me out, and I appreciate it a whole lot. If you really don't want to, well... Fuck me, and I'll see you guys the next one. Yeah, I'm all in.